council meeting. We have uh, got minutes in front of you. Should have had a chance to look over the minutes of the uh, last council meeting uh, in July, as well as the one in June, uh, and then the public works uh, board of works meetings. Anybody have any? Maybe need to change your hybrid to approve. I just have one thing, um, and I'm willing to pass on, but where the July 23rd, it just says one for food trucks and one for Dora, the Dora update, it just needs to the same one for special events, and then it's fine. So now what? I think you said it was three, and I just put two of the Dora, and I wasn't saying Yeah, the Dora is just the, uh, the one for special events, and then the one for um, the downtown. That is in the July ones? Uh, yes. Where, what page is that? Uh, the very front page. Where okay, it says there it is. It's very okay. top. Everything uh, else looks perfect. It's just that. Yeah. Okay, so what, what, where do you want me to add that after door? Um, it, where it says separate ordinances, and it has like the, um, whatever that is. The one for food trucks and one more. One for special events, and then one for downtown. Okay. And then it's good. With those changes, That's when we've those. seconded, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we've got, um, it's going to be a tedious meeting possibly. We're hoping to expedite it because we can't allow this stuff as formality. Uh, but I'm going to have Beth share some communication with the public as well as the council members. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, Andy Perkins, our city attorney, sent us this very nice um, memorandum that you all have a copy of that kind of goes down through the requirements regarding ordinances and the public hearings. So we have so many, we've got five public hearings tonight. <laughs> so there'll be five uh, separate public hearings and then we have nine ordinances and resolutions. So by following these instructions on how to do them, it should go faster than it has in the past. So just wanted to let you all know that it's right there. Okay, um, we're a little bit unclear on whether we actually have to have a vote to open the public hearing, but we're, so we're going to we're going to go ahead and vote just to be on the safe side. So I need a motion to open the public hearing for a cert certification of amendment to the zoning map. Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Brian. Brian. Thank you. Okay.
third public hearing. Any motions to open the, the petition to vacate a public road? Brian Lewis, North and South. So moved. Brian moved. Amy seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any public comment concerning this? Yes, sir. I would, would advise trying to keep public comment around three minutes if we can. Okay, I have to a letter to the board. Can I ask your name, sir? Uh, Mark Lapulahan. Okay. Um, uh, we are, we own property uh, where these streets are being vacated, and the vacating of the streets will uh, severely limit our access to any future use of these lots. We own eight lots. And we figure you hide some fishing. <clears throat> and there's there's just not too many ways to get in there other than the public streets. Um, and I don't know if any changes have been made, but when they um, when they pass out the uh, copies of what was being proposed, there's a lot of a lot of errors in it. A wrong street wrong dimensions, wrong lot numbers. There's many issues with the way the petitions are written. So I don't think you can really judge them the way they're written. So you check out some of the errors that are in it. And that's in both. Unless they've been changed, if somebody's changed them, since they initially passed them out for made corrections that I haven't seen. They are different from the original plat, which is probably what he is referring to. Because we had pulled the original plat, but then things were changed, like the roads aren't even the same, and the lots are different. So that's probably the difference that you're looking at. Can you show us on this where the lots are that you own? I'm sorry, I didn't. Can I show you? Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All there in kind of a little cluster. Is this is the same road back to the No, that's the road to the golf course. That's the golf course driveway. Considered in the past the possibility of building a house there on those lot eight lots that would face to the south, face the golf course. But uh, we don't have any plans and we really haven't thought about it too much until this came up about the limited access. We always assume there's going to be access. Just too much of this is the way I find to ask. Um, I 
Mountain Pine Elizabeth pertain particularly to this? It has to be just on this matter. Well, um, the way the the way uh, the way the uh, petitions were written is they were to come all the way down to the golf course from and this street is in here. That would mean they would cross across that street, which is I forget the name of Parkview or something like that. Yeah. And and the same on this street, they go too far. And they, they they cross over into this other street. Now, I don't know how the law would work. When you vacate this street, can you vacate part of another street at an intersection? I don't know how it works at an intersection. Maybe our legal firm or something can tell. All right. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I have five adjacent lots. Do you want my opinion on this? I think you might be able to clarify some things. What's your name is, sir? Roger Farley. Um, I can barely hear you from back there. Sorry. sorry. I said I, I have I own five adjacent lots, okay. so I might be able to clarify some things. Okay. So um, I don't know what map you're looking at here. All right. So you know the areas that we're actually most concerned about are pretty independent of Marty's and we're all for having happy neighbors so I think there could be accommodations that would be just fine. I do wonder though this street across here gives him access to all those properties even if those roads were vacated. That is a road that comes up here and that right away comes all the way across hey. and these are the roads we're talking about vacating. So question I have is if we vacate him, half the property goes to one yes. property owner, half of it goes to the other property owner. Is that going to give on your half, is that going to give you room to access? So he'll go from 120 across to 150 across. It doesn't really, that way. It doesn't really help the access. No. Okay, so, well, so right here, this is all impenetrable for us from here down. And from here down, this is impenetrable for us. This road here that goes along the night Friday, I don't think anyone's talking about vacating this. So you can come all the way across here. Uh, well, the way so, these, the way the proposal is written, it includes down to that street. Yeah, I don't think anybody really wants that. Because, yeah. What's that? You can't do it down to that street. Right, you just don't do it to that street. Yeah, because you, right. you don't want to vacate. You, you still want access to be able to come up into here. It's okay. So I, I think that's completely simple. We go to here. Okay. Um, this is a lot that's owned by this property, yes, on this property. So, you know, it doesn't really make any sense to us as neighbors to the Lewis's that this is all right of way. You know, we don't even use the right of way. We come across this part of the land anyway. Um, we're fine neighbors. We know each other our whole lives. So, we're fine with making this trade. But if what Marty is trying to do is preserve these lots, he owns all of this one, right? How does that help? That's the only much money you have. Yeah. So, Right, if he's trying to preserve, you know, access to that, right, I don't know if you're allowed to just vacate the roadway down to those points. I don't know if that's something Brian would want. That'd be tough. Yeah. Is, that, is that a possibility or not? Yeah, if you, if you just want to, if you just want to vacate up to the back of Mr. Houlihan's property, I mean, I, I'm okay with that. It's just, you know, like everybody's been saying, all, it's all overgrown, there's no access anywhere, you know, except for where we have right here a little bit, but everything's all overgrown. He's got easier access back here than up here. Right. But if you just want to vacate to the north right. side of his property. And then it gives him an intact. Yeah, yeah, I mean, then he can access it. In any case, nobody wanted to vacate this. No. But like you say, how these yeah. things get communicated. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, and that's fine, but this is this is questionable, I think, access. Uh, the the golf, golf cart building is built on part of that road in here. Well, the, this aerial shot is right up against the edge of it. So, I don't, but that is a platter group. Yeah, across Park View. Park View. Yep. Anyway, I just wanted to get that clarification if that helps at all. I don't want to take any more time. Yeah, there were you at on this. Come through your planning commission. <laughs> yeah, well, out of courtesy, Brian, you might have stopped that courtesy. <laughs> And I actually approached Heather like two, three years ago. I yeah. said, what would it take to vacate that road issue? If everyone's yeah. signature, I go, well, maybe is, Brian would want it. This is <laughs> why you have two separate petitions, one for each road, because I wasn't sure if we had issues on one side or the other. So right. that's why there's two ordinances. Um, so I talked to Brian, and the gentleman I know who's 
probably questioning this measurement on this side. Yeah. And we went down to this side because if this whole road is vacated, it would only be this portion here because it's 30 feet. So then once this is vacated, this end house that is part of that road would get to 15 feet. But this road is not a question. But if anything touching this side of the roadway, they would get the half. The way the dimensions, it now takes away the dimensions, it takes it all the way down to the south side. It does, of this, just to this side. Well, this one too. Um, okay, well, it shouldn't on this one. because We did the measurements off the plat, so I don't know if it's different in the roadway or different. Oh, I was just using the, I was just using the distances on the plat. Okay. Um, so that's what this side is. This, this road, the southern part is not in question of being vacated at all. And it just went down to this site, so this particular property would get the 15 feet if it was vacated. Okay, that's not the way it's written. Well, it's going to have the whole distance because it's going to go the whole distance on the Why well, is the reason to? Because they need. They why should they vacate? Why should we vacate 30 feet of this street? It would. It would be 15 feet. It'd only be 15 feet because then the other 15 foot would stay with this street. But you it don't would understand stop. my question. If, if you extend the vacation of this street all the way down to the Elks property, you're closing a section of this, you're vacating 30 feet of this street and this one, which makes no sense. And also the one petition that shows vacating this street over here where people leave, they have the wrong street names on the petition. Unless somebody has corrected them since I'm looking at them. I guess my concern would be let's get it corrected and straight now and then we'll see what we've got. Go on from there. Well, I would mm -hmm. with you. There's no way to approve it the way it's written because it doesn't the air. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Were you looking to just not vacate from your properties down? Would you be okay to just stop in, stop into your property? I I wouldn't be in favor of that, but I don't know how how much uh, uh, I could justify 
strongly opposed to that. Yeah, if you're not a property, if not adjacent property owner, you have no, you can't oppose it. But if you're adjacent to it, you know, we could, we could grant the vacation down to a certain point, you have to rewrite it, but once it, you know, if it doesn't touch your property, you have no, you, you have no right to object. Well, um, if you stop at one lot north of my property, if you take it all the way down to my property, then it does touch my property. You can object, but we may not listen to you. <laughs> well, it would, it would touch your property line, but legally you wouldn't get any of the vacating. So this right. would still be, it would all still be over yeah. wherever they stop. So mm -hmm. unless it lies directly adjacent or joining your lot, you're not going to be. Yeah, it would, it would match up the corner. Okay. Would sure. you be satisfied with that as much as you could be? I guess. Okay. Brian, would you be okay as with that as, if she yeah. redrafts this and brings it back to us? Yeah, I'm fine with that. How about this one? Are we talking about this tree? Well, if it, you already got property along there, so I would, yeah. I would stop it. My suggestion is stopping it up here where his okay. property starts. I didn't know we could vacate half the street. I didn't know that was even possible. Yeah. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah, you can. So. Um, now what's your street? The one thing, vacate the whole thing, the whole thing, if it can't be gained, it's does 15 more feet on each side of all these lots. Right. It makes his lots bigger. Right. That is, that is a benefit, but if it doesn't matter to you, build house. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, you may come back to us. You build a house. You may want that 15 feet. You may come back to us and want us to vacate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we've got that option. Yeah. So let's. Question. Okay. When the the sewer was everything was put in, is there anything on those been on those streets? No, they're all undeveloped. I mean, they're all. I mean, well, it's, it's all just over. So he, he wants to put a house in on his property. How will he connect? Well, he'll still have that southern portion and then come up through. And then oh, yeah, who's he come through where? Well, they'll have the southern portion, so I don't know if it's coming down. I mean, this road's developed. It's severely, it's severely limits the option. So now how his utilities can make it. I mean, either way, it's not going to be good to let it was. Well, because none of this is developed. This is all overgrown. Right. So, where are the streets there? Where are the streets? Well, they would have to come down. I don't know if this house is left here, so I'm just going to sort of like this side. So, they would have to come down. However, this is all overgrown. This road is still open. And then if his is still open, all of this is still open. It's all open. It's all open. It's not, it's not developed, but it's an actual road. It's an actual road. So can you can you ride? It is. It has been. Over here, over here is the two seventy-five. Public road east and west, Brian Lewis. So moved. 
Second. Ruben seconded. Brian and Amy. Uh, public comment. Any further than what we already had? Okay. Need a motion to close public hearing on that. So moved. Amy, make it simple. Brian and Amy again. Now I need a uh, motion to uh, vacate public street for a uh, going order as a petitioner. Oh, did I, did I not vote? I didn't vote. Uh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 I probably missed a couple votes there, but we're okay. All right. Need a motion to open the public hearing on the vacation of public street. Uh, petitioner going border on J Street. Motion. Second. Amy and Brian. All in favor say aye. Aye. Get that one. Okay, Petitioner Dwayne, do you have anything you want to say concerning this? We have yes, a map in front of us. It's just uh, what we talked about before. It's the unimproved part of J Street behind 180 Fulton, which is our warehouse for the street department, uh, so that we can put a security fence around the area. Okay, any other public comment concerning that? Any motion to close? So moved. Second. Brian and Amy, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Old business. Uh, is Nick here? Anybody from that development present? Okay, so we're not going to go any further with that. Old business door update. Amy and Andy. Yes. Um, so we've done uh, quite a bit of work. Um, we've done some work to get things together. So I promised we have two separate door ordinances, we will not be voting on these, but um, this is so you can see what we are uh, proposing. So I'm gonna take these two and if you want to have these down. Um, we also have uh, Councilman uh, Jack Wilhunt from Warsaw here to um, answer any questions related to, if any of the council members have questions related to a uh, city that is currently using the DORA, um, he is here to answer that and show um, different things that they've had. So um, <clears throat> after much conversation with uh, council folks and community members, uh, different individuals, uh, Andy Shots and the whole world basically, we've spoken and interviewed different people, talked to other communities. It was decided that um, it would make more sense to do two separate ordinances. Uh, one we're calling the downtown Dora, so that is the traditional Dora in which we have been discussing related to providing the opportunity for restaurants to not have fences. And so that would be, the map is, I believe, I don't know what page Andy put this together. Uh, one, two, I think it's four pages in, so you can see the map of what that is. So that's the traditional uh, designated permittees with the restaurants. Um, and so this, we worked diligently to put the ordinance as well as the um, maps, the um, what it will look like to have the signs. Um, and also, I believe the applications are in here, right, Andy? Or did we not add those? We can share those. So the applications, we have received all nine applications for all of the designated permittees. So every designated permittee, every restaurant that's in this downtown Dora has submitted an application um, in favor of moving forward with the Dora. Um, so that is the, what we're calling the downtown Dora, which is what I like to call the restaurant Dora. Um, the, the second is a special event Dora. Um, we have a little work to do on this um, related to speaking to um, Accelerate Indiana Municipalities attorney, Becca McCray, she indicated that to be able to do this specifically to support the chamber or the Main Street organization related to activities and events, that we would have to choose specific events to institute this DORA. And so I have an email to Julian with the chamber and also to Julie Wooten to talk about what those different events would be, and those would be the events in which this DORA would be activated, that they could activate it if they would like to. Um, with that, you'll see the map as well. So that has the whole downtown in the area, and that would just be in use when someone put a special event application in. They would indicate through that special event application that they would like to use that DORA. And then um, 
it includes the original area um, as well as um, the other businesses so that it would be accessed for wherever those events would be. So we're taking it to the future of events um, wherever those would be located. So, um, and as well, all those applications have come in for um, support for that. So. so this is our homework for the next month. To look at that, um, to come up with any questions, to check into the yellow pieces, um, what I have to do. Uh, so I have, um, John Garrett had asked me to um, request of the businesses that they would pay for all the marketing, and they have agreed that they would sh share the cost of all of the marketing for Fedora um, to the signs that are going to be for the street signs for us to put up, as well as the signs that they would put on their doors. Um, every piece, the, the original set of cups. Um, we've talked about viability. Um, Andy and I had an extensive conversation about that um, to make sure that we're covered in that direction. Um, Rochester Downtown Partnership has agreed to host the maps there for the QR codes as well as to be the uh, organization that would supply the cups into the future so they can use this as a fundraiser. I think that that's everything. Alyssa is here in favor, so if you want a business perspective, Monica, I think Julie is here as well. Um, they are here to answer questions related to anything that you guys can have as well as Jack, so. Um. I don't know about other council members. I have been contacted by a couple of people who uh, are against this for the reasons of, of drinking on public streets and maybe the message that sends to children. Uh, has there been any kind of an economic impact study what it means to the businesses that want to participate in the downtown door especially more so than the yeah. event. Can I invite those two to speak? Uh, yeah, because I know that they actually, the council requested that the um, police department do a survey of crime related to the Dora, as well as that they um, worked with the chamber. So Jack can probably answer some of those questions. I'm putting him on the spot, but he's a very smart man, so he can answer a lot of those, because they've been doing this, I'm not sure for how long, but um, they've been navigating that. So if you don't mind, Jack, answering some of those questions. That's, he's the expert in the matter. I'm just been trying <laughs> you, to take you, it all you're, in, you're so. Too kind. <laughs> too kind. Do you mind if I slide this over yeah. and use it just? Uh, well, I want to thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be here with you. Um, I am, as Amy said, a council member of Warsaw City. Uh, and I was asked to come here to share some information about our door. Uh, I've got some, some information to pass out to you. Uh, and I can also tell you a little bit about ours. Um, <clears throat> we started investigating the door uh, in the fall of 2023, the urging of our, our chamber. Uh, member of our, members of our council, like yours, uh, struggled with, with a number of questions. Uh, Councilman Smith, you, you expressed the, um, uh, the questions that you had as some constituents about what kind of message that sends. We struggled with that as well. As a matter of fact, we had one no vote uh, on that because of that. Uh, you know, how will the community react? Uh, will it open our downtown to uh, more alcohol-related incidents? You know, we were really concerned about that. We debate, debated many options uh, for uh, establishing a door. Uh, being pretty conservative, I initially favored establishing a door that would be for special events only. Uh, after discussions with our police department, it became apparent that for continuity, and to help uh, stifle confusion, uh, establishing a time period of 365 days a year was, was our best, best plan. And the reason for that was, uh, we, we had two reasons for that. Uh, one, it established 365 days a year, a police officer didn't have to consistently keep looking at his calendar and say, is it good today or, or not? Are, are they legal or are they not? Uh, that was one thing that, that helped out our PD. Uh, and two, Adora actually tightens up. And this one, uh, Councilman Smith, I, I think you could uh, speak to. It will actually uh, 
uh, to tighten up alcohol consumption, public alcohol consumption. Um, when Dora, uh, Dora is established, consumers can only legally consume alcohol within the Dora uh, cup. Uh, sorry, got a couple of them here that I brought to pass around. These are our Dora cups that we have currently. I got a couple of these today. Uh, they cannot walk around with an open beer publicly. Uh, however, what most of us did not realize was uh, that prior to this Dora, people can consume alcohol legally walking around town with an open container. Not in the car, obviously, there's law against that. But they could actually consume alcohol walking around. I could go to a car show. You guys got to go to a car show coming up here in October. That's, that's a really nice car show. Um, I could legally put a 12 pack in a cooler in the back of my trunk, pull up to the car show and have 12 beers during the day. You know, until I become intoxicated or some other thing where the police would come along and say, hey buddy, come on, let's go. But that's, you know, that is something that was a misconception of ours that we we were under the assumption that um, you couldn't do that normally just every day but uh, unless you have an ordinance against that and I don't know if there is even a way to establish that uh, locally uh, it's legal uh, so under the Dora the amount of drinks. Uh, now let's say we've we've established a door, and you guy you you have your map, and I, I brought a map of ours as well. Um, but within this Dora that we have established, there he is. Within this Dora that we have established, now all of a sudden people cannot publicly drink unless they've got it in a Dora cup. And those drinks are, uh, are no, what do I want to say? They, they're um, limited. Limited. That's 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 a good one. Yeah, yeah that wasn't the word I was looking for, but that is right. Uh, it, it's it's limited, much like it is in, if you go into a bar. You know, it's under the responsibility of the bar owner to make sure that that patron does not uh, consume too much alcohol. So in a way, the door, this was something that was really kind of a revelation to us, was that it actually kind of tightened up the amount of alcohol consumption that could be done in the door publicly. So having gone through uh, these things that we had, these issues that we debated, we worked through these and many more questions. After working through, I was convinced that the option was a good one. Uh, it promoted our downtown area and supported local business. Uh, March 4, on second reading, Warsaw Council passed the ordinance establishing a door. On May 17th was the night we kicked off our door during the Warsaw's Fat and Skinny Tire Fest. Since then, it has been pretty quiet. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I was talking to the mayor this morning, and I asked him, I said, you heard anything about the door? How's it going? You know, he says, you know, he says, I have not heard any complaints about it whatsoever. It has been, it has been still over quiet. Um, and he was, he was very surprised about that, which I was too. Um, from our PD, I, I talked to one of our captains in our police department. One of the things that we, we were very concerned about was an uptick in alcohol-related incidents. Uh, so as we went through this whole process, I asked the PD for um, specific, you know, what kind of incidents have we had over the past two or three years, which was very low. And we established that as a baseline so that should any, anything kind of tick up, then we would know, okay, it could possibly be related to this door. Uh, we haven't had any incidents. Uh, as a matter of fact, our, um, our, our uh, city, or our captain was, uh, is very supportive of the door, basically because of the way they can control it and, and that sort of thing. So uh, it's 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 been a really good thing. Uh, we 
we, uh, let's see, we, we, we've worked really hard, as I'm sure you, you folks have, um, in Warsaw to maintain a family friendly atmosphere, especially downtown. Um, and we wanted to have some of these things in place. We wanted to be able to pull the plug on it just as quickly as we could if, if we started having an uptick in, in, uh, in incidents. And there have been none so far. So, you know, if, we've only been doing it for maybe about, it's been established for about four months. So it's still relatively new, uh, still relatively young. Um, I've also talked to some of the establishments downtown and asked them um, what their thoughts are for. And I was talking to Crystal from Rex's Rendezvous today. Uh, she supplied these cups for you to take a look at. Uh, she said, we're seeing new customers during special events customers that never came into their door before. As a matter of fact, I think she said the last one that they had, uh, they sold, I think, 125 of these. Uh, they just tack on a 25 cent fee for a door cup, and that's how they pay for the door cup. They call it a convenience fee, which I think is, is perfectly fine. It seems to work. It seems to be bringing people downtown more, and it seems to be bringing, uh, getting people to last uh, and stay. It, it better regulates the alcohol consumption, she said, and it helps retain uh, special events downtown. Uh, when things like this go on, it helps promote the special event, which helps promote the downtown. Uh, it's, it seems to be a win-win for everybody. Now, what works for Warsaw may not work for Rochester, and I, I don't, I don't pretend to, to know your community as well as I know my own. I know it has worked well for us. Uh, I have some uh, information here, but from uh, our perspective, the door has been a positive one uh, for Warsaw. Uh, it, but it, it continues, on, if it continues on the way it has, uh, I see no reason to, to repeal it. Uh, if you're interested, I have with me uh, copies of the ordinance, press clippings, um, the Warsaw City door, Literature that on the map. I'm happy to leave that with you. Um, and uh, you can also go if you really, really want to get the weeds. Uh, you can go on to our Warsaw website, uh, and we have all of our meetings are uh, videotaped uh, and live streamed. And uh, it would be the uh, February 20th and March 4th council meetings. Uh, you can you can listen to the debate. If, if you're not bored enough with your own meetings, you can get bored by my meeting. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, and I, I guess I'll just stop right there and we'll ask you if you have any questions. So you you only have the one Dora, and it's downtown. We only have one door, and it encompasses so, I think about eight uh, How do you handle a special event request if they want to have? Well, one? typically they have their special events in downtown. And it all fits within the one area. How many locations participate? I believe we got uh, seven to eleven, something like that. We've got seven to eleven different restaurants and pubs and uh, so forth that, that participate in this. Was that you mentioned before about the old current or prior to this, you were able to bring a twelve pack of beer and go. To downtown. Is that was that a city ordinance, no. county, or state? That, I believe that's state. It's, we didn't have anything preventing it, and so therefore, uh, as far as state, and I'm sure your your city uh, council uh, can help look into that, and make sure that's. But you said you, your ordinance makes it more restrictive than the state law. That having well, having a Dora establishes the fact that uh, you have to have your beverage in a door and cup if you're walking around town. And by doing it 365 days a year, we've established that the only public drinking you can do, you can do in the door is with this cup. In that boundary. In that boundary. Now, is that okay? I'm getting probably too far beyond where we need to go here. So Jack, when you say special events, 
the end of 365, so it technically it is kind of a full Dora. Yep. Yeah. And you don't highlight like where we had this one that was just special events that we right. had to identify. So you were actually doing a downtown Dora, but you are adding the full area into it. Right. Right. Because they yeah. can do events and everything. Yeah. If they had a spot, they could do events. Yeah. Not they wanted to. And 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 that way, uh, it, it relieves <coughs> the council it relieves the PD it relieves everybody of happening to okay, what which door are we doing the panel and you know it, it, it just made it simpler. Well in the special events door you have to put in that you're having a special event and everybody has to tell the sit the state, correct? That's the way I understand it. They have to tell the state liquor board that hey, we're gonna be part of the special events door. So no. the ordinance would, oh. this second one, the special event, what right. Becca had said, and they're going to, they will review it if that's the way we go before we get to it, but um, they, the special events would be identified. So the alcohol and tobacco commission would come, they would know whatever is on here would be when they can show up. Because they may somebody not, has to somebody may not have time. the event, but they would, that would be what they would use as their, uh, their uh, map. So they would say, they could show up if we could not have an event on that day, even though it's in the ordinance. Or somebody would, I don't know, register downtown partnership or someone would put in applicant, a special event application asked to do that. Right. So but that's, that's how the Alcohol Tobacco Commission, back I said, would know it is a lot more work, you know, to manage that part. But there was some discomfort having kind of the full capacity 365. So that was how we, how we try to reconcile but some discomfort with that but it sounds like you guys there, did it differently. But. Yeah, we and we did kind of look at you know establishing different doors and we we are we're still open to having other doors. They'll probably be patterned after this but only maybe in a different section of town. Um, we don't allow alcohol indoor or public parks. Um, there's been some discussion about about that because um, our park pavilion which was uh, renovated by uh, one of the local companies, really nice. And whenever you get something that nice, you know, people want alcohol if they're having weddings there or, or so forth. So we're, we're, we'll be looking at some of those in the future. But for now, we've, we've stuck with this one. We kind of you know, wanted to put our toes in the water first and not just go in whole hog. But uh, uh, it's, it's worked out really well for us so far. Here's uh, that's a copy of our our ordinance that we passed, um, some press clippings, and, and so forth. So, so I assume with the next council meeting we'll move in full force forward on this uh, with a, uh, any basically an ordinance or two ordinances to possibly uh, read. Yeah. Probably okay. won't be doing all three at that night, but maybe one and two and then three the following month if everything goes sure but as long as the two ordinances are what the council i mean that's kind of from my perspective this is the way that we are moving forward because right. that was the requested the request um and as long as everyone's saying that's still yeah, how they want may, to do it we may vote the downtown and not vote this one yeah but we would just have to have the full so i would have to have the event so i'd have to work with julie and Julian to figure out what events yeah. need to be in here, as well as we have to get the legal descriptions. Um, and then Casey Hensley is working on um, the exterior boundaries. So she is doing that from the maps. So we just have a couple of additional pieces that we have to get, but we would, our hope is to be able to submit both those in totality. Next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. But I wanted to, you know, and Jack would probably be willing to share his contact information in case you guys have any additional questions that you want to ask him privately, um, as well as I'll have this stuff here. And if Jack, you want are you okay if Amy sends us all your contact info? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be any worse than the constituents I've got back home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Jack. And we'll uh, move forward on this. We'll be ready for the next meeting to get yep. a chance to read it all. Any other old business? Can I give one comment on it? Yeah. It's just a real life example of how it works downtown right now. We had a band in 
a month ago. We uh, worked with Ruth. We had an outdoor market on private property between the theater and Ruthless. By the end of the day, we had to get three different permits, even though we're on private property and at the theater. Uh, two catering on Ruth, Ruthless and Evergreens part and a catering inside the theater where if we had an established Dora, they could have had drinks at Ruth's, uncorked, Monica's, you know, and come to the show. We're not, we're just trying to make it a little more easier for visitors to come to our town. Like, it was a lot of paperwork. And that, during that week, Ruth had, like, somebody at the state gave us a wrong email or, I mean, it, it takes us a lot of time to pull through this red tape. So, and that's event based, but that's kind of, you know, the, with fall coming, the theater should have two events a month like that, hopefully. Um, but we'd like to make that easier on everyone. So that, that would ease that for sure. Okay. Um, so I would invite you, and I you you here for the same reason. Mm -hmm. I would invite anybody surrounding the store a conversation to come to the next meeting as well. Um, I, I told you the old business I have. When I asked you, because you're not on the agenda, we talked, I don't remember how we left it. Did you want to talk about the times tonight? No, we're, we moved, we moved Beth that, and we I moved that. The next yeah. Meeting. Okay, very good. Okay, new business. Uh, first up, uh, the Keller tax abatement and zoning approval. Uh, and that correlates, if you look down below, with resolution 24 and 25. Andy, I'm assuming we need to vote on each one of those resolutions separately. Yeah, I think you should vote on them separately, but you don't have to. It's a resolution on ordinance. If you want to put it in one motion, you certainly can. Okay, this is pretty much a procedural thing. We've had a lot of discussion about this. Do you have anything else you want to add, Greg? Uh, just that it's essentially the same uh, presentation that we, we brought before you um, on a couple of different occasions. This is really just a continuance from actions that were taken in June and July um, to make sure that we are doing everything by the book. The project that we're proposing remains the same. Um, what we're requesting remains the same. But I'm happy to answer any questions um, the council may have this evening. If you, remember, if you remember our discussion was about uh, their bid for the state tax award or the tax credit award. Um, and the fact that they get awarded, we have to come up with our 10% match, and part of this would be, a, I mean, just to be applicable for it at 10%. So we had this discussion a couple different times, and uh, we need to do it. <laughs> I'll put it yeah. another way. So, so, so what am I? That's one of them. Got yeah. resolution 25. 24. 24. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Oh, here's 24. Yeah, I see 24. 24 dash. That shows the map. Um, I think it has a schedule in there too, doesn't it, Oh, yes. Second. And just to add a bit more context, the uh, tax abatement that we're requesting would be for improvements only because the property that we're considering is more or less unimproved with just a vacant garage on it. It's contributing slightly less than zero dollars to the tax base. Um, we would still continue to pay all the taxes that the land is currently generating. And then once the project is up and running and established, it would significantly jump up. Um, and it would have a stabilizing effect on our long-term operations because we, by state policy, have to be self-sufficient without any external um, support financially. Uh, lets us better able to respond to wear and tear as the property ages with reduction in operating costs, and it'll, it'll allow for a nicer property in the long term. Okay. So the first that that uh, resolution twenty five is basically just affirming what the planning commission already done. Uh, twenty four is the abatement. Basically, um, confirmatory resolution. We did the declaratory in June, I believe, wasn't it? Correct. So I need a motion 
debate on both of these resolutions. We can do them all one one vote. So, so item six on page two of twenty one. The reason we're doing that abatement is that the abatement and that goes towards ten percent. Is that correct? Yes. And that and we need to do that at that level to help with that ten percent. Yeah. September meeting. Uh, 
open schedule. Correct. Public hearing. Well, public, yeah, all that stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, any other new business? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 16, which is just the formality. I say it's a formality because it's just giving the Board of Works the authority to name streets. It's here somewhere. And that is an ordinance, so we need to. Uh, we're going to read that ordinance, and by rule, we can do the first and third reading by title only. A second reading can be done by title only. That's why we have objection, and we can read the whole thing. Um, it is ordinance 16 2024. I understood that's probably what happened. I was just asking. You didn't need to bring it up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, didn't have to say, you didn't have to say that loud. <laughs> well, 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 don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, everybody was curious. <laughs> so I need you to pass it. Okay. Brian, you want to handle the heavy work? Sure. And um, we do not need a vote to read these ordinances. Okay. Introducing ordinance number 16 2024 by title only, creating street names. There are no objections. Um, like the read, the second reading by title only. So moved. Second. We don't need a vote. All we need is an objection. Okay. Okay. If we have an objection, raise your, you know, object. But otherwise, we don't need a. Ordinance okay. number 16-2024, creating street names. Okay, at this time, I'd like to have the third reading, uh, ordinance 16-2024 by title only. Um, ordinance 16-2024, creating street names. Comment, questions. Need a motion to approve that ordinance. So moved. Second. Art and then Brian. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Ordinance 17. I read through this and I was actually dumber after I read it than I was before I read it. It's just basically a formality. When we codify all the ordinances and resolutions, the American Legal Publishing requires a, an ordinance. And the last one that we had done was like 2016. So we're updating to get approved, actually, to be codified. So that's what the purpose of it is. I don't know why the wording is so dramatic, but that's the way it sounded to the, the, the traditional reason you see some uh, ordinances listed in urgency is that uh, even though your ordinances don't require a finding of, of an emergency to introduce and pass an ordinance in the same night, all it requires is that there are at least five of you and not, not four of you, and you can do it the same night. There are some municipalities that say in order to introduce and pass an ordinance in the same night, you have to find an emergency. And so if you're American Legal Publishing, you're just going to include that in every every template of this type of order. Okay. That's that's why it's in. Thank you. Had I known that, I would take it. So this is like, yeah. this is basically so you can do your job and that's get right. everything done. That's right. Okay. You're you're blessing the organizational work that American Legal Publishing does when they take <coughs> all your ordinances and then create a, a code. And put them in the right place in the code. That's right. Brian, can you give them our blessing? <laughs> uh, introduction of ordinance number 17 2024. We'll go into first reading by title only. Uh, ordinance 17 2024, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Rochester is declaring an emergency. All right, if there are no objections, uh, we'll have the second reading by title only. Okay, the ordinance number 17-2024, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. Okay, and we'll read the third reading by title only. Um, so ordinance 17-2024, an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. Okay, need a motion to approve that ordinance. 
I'll make a motion. I'll second. Amy and Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 activity on any city property has to be approved by the Board of Public Works and this says well for city park property the park board can approve it. Okay. 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 So Brian you have to read that. Uh, introduction of ordinance number 20-2024 we'll begin with the first reading by title only. Ordinance number 20-2024 ordinance regarding commercial use of city property. If there are no objections the second reading will also be with title only. 20-2024 an ordinance regarding commercial use of city property. All right, I'll put this um, on the agenda for the third reading. Uh, I'll read this ordinance by ordinance 20-2024 by title only. Ordinance number 20-2024 an ordinance regarding commercial use of city property. Okay, I need a motion to approve ordinance number 2024. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay, uh, Ordinance 21, Vacating Public Road, Brian Lewis, North and South. Um, I guess the question again is, um, do we want to abbreviate this vacation down to Mr. Houlihan? Is that, am I pronouncing that correct? Is, is your last name Houlihan? Is that pronounced correctly? Okay. Do we, do we want them to rewrite this and just vacate it down to his property or do we want to take it as written? Uh, and I'm a little bit confused on what is north and south and what is east and west, but it looks a lot better. I'd like it to vacate just to their property. Yeah, and I'd like it presented. Is there, she left, I think. Brian, is there a way we can do this um, just down to Mr. Uglian's property on both sides? come back with one uh, vacating request for everything that comes up here to drive and then down both sides down to his property on each side I'll, I'll ask I, I don't know why you couldn't okay. uh, but it's two separate roads so oh it is uh, oh yeah. well so it's probably have to be that. two okay so we'll need to lay you know <clears throat> okay um, are, is, there, is everybody good with that plan yes. to do it that way yes I mean, unless we're over, unless Bob gets outnumbered on that request, I mean. Okay, I, I think the council generally would like that rewritten and would we'll just stop it at his property. And then, sir, if you have a need for that down the road, you know, for if you build a house and need that extra room, you know, we just have to come back to us and see about it at that time. But, um, I mean, everybody, everybody does, I mean, he does understand that if you vacate both those roads, Two park road that he does gain 30 feet yeah, you get, you to get his property. Option, you so get 30 I, feet. Now you have to pay taxes on it. But it's just, but just, just so, so you, everybody's clear about it. Yeah, just so everybody's got a clear understanding. And uh, you guys are okay with that? And they come back to us with a, a different map? Okay. All right. Then we don't have anything to vote on that tonight. Mr. Mayor, if someone wants to move to table that until next month, that we way. need a motion to table it. Yeah, that way you, you confirm it on the agenda. You don't have to have new hearings. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Brian, or uh, Bob made the motion to table it. Bob Kennedy. Bob seconded it. Thank you. All in favor of table until next meeting. And in the meantime, we can get a redrawn map to this. All right. It's 21. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. 
are doing the same thing on 22. And we're doing the same thing, I assume, on 22 since it's all part of one basic group. So uh, go ahead and make a motion on ordinance 22. Table that, please. Second. Uh, Brian Fitzpatrick made the motion. Who? Uh, second. Mark seconded. All in favor of tabling ordinance 2020, oh, 22, I'm sorry. Say aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Okay. Then we need a um, reading on the ordinance for 23-2024, which is the vacation of J Street. Okay. Introduction of ordinance number 23-2024, on the first reading by title only. Uh, ordinance number 23-2024, ordinance vacating J Street. Extending north to south adjacent to the western boundary of the petitioner's parcel. Um, unless there's any objections, we'll have the second reading by title only. Ordinance number 23-24. Sorry. Ordinance number 23-2024. Ordinance vacating J Street, extending north to south adjacent to the western boundary of the petitioner's parcel. Okay, we'll put this ordinance on the agenda for the third reading at the this time, um, by title only, ordinance number 23-2024, ordinance vacating J Street, extending north to south adjacent to the western boundary of the petitioner's parcel. Do we need a motion to approve ordinance number 23-2024? I'll make a motion. Amy moved. Second. Bruce seconded. All in favor, raise your right hand. It passed itself. I forget what I'm doing. So I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, I believe we're done except for our department head reports. Chief uh, Shots. Uh, good evening. Uh, these, the monthly stats are not going to be accurate as far as the incident total because we're operating on spilling and coding both uh, as county cameras and that good patch. And weekend for us. And we've been chasing our tail trying to enter the incidents and spill them into Cody. And we've just kind of given up on that. Um, so for the month of July, in Cody, we had 489 incidents. Um, I looked in Spillman, there were 367 incidents in Spillman uh, for the month of July, but some of those were doubled into Cody. So once we get there on the same database, once we're in Spillman, um, moving forward, Cleaner, but it's going to take us a couple of months before we get truly accurate numbers. Uh, 18 accidents, those are accurate. 77 warnings, 65 offenses, uh, 49 case reports, 21 lockouts, 5 towed vehicles, 30 people incarcerated, and then you have the crimes that those people were locked for. Um, other than that, uh, we've got the parade this weekend, so we'll be busy Saturday morning while we'll the streets blocked off at 8 30, so if you're going to the parade, get there before then. Um, fires, one brush fire, two unattended fires, three vehicle fires, seven alarms, uh, six gas leaks, one river rescue, five accidents, uh, three events or inspections, they were all events, I think, that we were, and then uh, 24 medical runs. Other than that, everything's been pretty much the same. No major purchases or breakdowns. <coughs> Department Good evening. Since your last meeting, we did take possession of two new uh, Ford F-550s from Rochester Ford. Um, they're over at uh, Terry Truck in Winnemac right now getting dump beds and snow plows put on them. Um, we ordered those back in December of last year. Um, we are uh, currently clearing the property east of McDonald Drive that the city uh, took over responsibility for in preparation for the extension of McDonald Drive from um, State Road 25 over to Southway 31, so we can open that up. Um, 
we're prepping for the nickel plate um, um, event this weekend um, and we'll be working with the police departments for getting barrels and bar barricades out on the park side uh, the pool season has closed um, we're already in the process of uh, winterizing the pool for uh, the season uh, the splash pad it will be open until uh, after Labor Day and then the following Tuesday then we will um, shut it down and uh, start prepping it for the winter and um, just a plug <clears throat> um, and I'm sure you've seen it on the front page of the paper but we're um, pushing for our new uh, five-year plan we would really like the community's involvement as far as inputs on uh, the things that we can do to improve our parks and to uh, get that um, long-range plan put together. That's all I have unless you have any questions. Dwayne, is there a specific um, link that needs to be shared? Or that At the nickel plate, um, there's going to be a lot of advertisement. The park board is going to have a, a um, their own um, uh, set up, booth set up, and there will be, um, I know they're are having calling cards with a QR code that you can scan and, and then do the the um, uh, uh, survey on there. So yeah, they'll be out in force this weekend. Did you want to briefly talk about the sidewalk committee? I didn't think we were going to talk about that today. <laughs> it's forthcoming. Okay, it's forthcoming sidewalk. Yep. about what this weekend's going to be. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with the parade and downtown festival. We've got a full lineup all day, so it should be a nice event for everybody. Looks like the weather's going to cooperate. The parade starts at 9. parade starts at 9. The music Our starts at 11. Morning, they had over 50 entrants for the parade. 67 60, this morning. 67, and that, you know, like the morning. car club is one entry. You know, so that could be a, it'll be, a, this could be a nice break. And like the tractor, like one person signed up for tractors, that could also, so. How many did you say, 67? 67, as of this morning's board meeting. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, that's that's, that's how many floats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that. how many floats. Entries. Entries. Or just entries. Entries. So entries. Could be an hour long. Good deal. Oh, tell no. Do what? I said, are you going to tell us no? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> squash you. Door door over the He came in with all his enthusiasm. Yeah. With our guy, has he got any uh, any guts or gets enough to curb his enthusiasm? <laughs> no. <laughs> it worked it hard. You know, they've gotten to a lot of other parades, passed out flyers, or enrolled a lot of people. This has been on his heart ever since I met him three or four years ago. It was yeah. the first time I met him. He brought up a parade. He wanted to see a parade, so it's been. It's great that it's going to be what it is. I mean, it's exciting, exciting days. So, okay. I just hope he does it again next year. What? Yeah. Yeah. I just hope he does it again next year. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Nice. There you go. Amy, you got any other area planning commission? Uh, continuing the conversation about solar. So if you have strong feelings about solar farms in Fulton County, then I would come to the next area plan meeting um, as we will be uh, discussing the whole um, ordinance in totality. So we've had lots of good discussion. I've been pretty impressed with Duane's research as well as others who have attended. We've had a lot of public comments. So um, a lot of people are very opinionated about it, but it's actually pretty fascinating. So I'm interested in seeing kind of where everything lands. But I feel like we're coming up with a pretty um, relevant and well thought out uh, decision. So, and then Animal Adoption Center, uh, Janet is a rock star, and she uh, single-handedly put together one of the largest rummage sales I think I've ever seen. I uh, volunteered twice to um, receive donations, and I <clears throat> was super impressed with the generosity of citizens who stopped by to donate all of their goods to us so that the animal 
adoption center can raise money. So I have not asked her about how much money she's raised as of yet, but um, there was enough there that they could have raised a large amount. So she does a good job. And she met uh, with Trent and Jody, met with Trent, myself, and others just to talk about budget to understand what their budget needs are and any potential changes. So trying to make sure we meet expectations. When is that area? Well, actually, I think there is going to be a special meeting because there are two items yet yeah, that we still needed to settle on. And then after we have that special meeting, then it'll be the regularly scheduled meeting, which will be uh, well, you know, just last night, so That's next Monday. month. If you want to, yeah, if you want that one, that would be the right. Monday, yeah. So, and that'll be the final finalizer. Yeah. I can make sure that gets out, Mark, if you're interested. I'll let them know. And then just to add on that, and then once that's done, then it will go to the commissioners, and then it's going to go to the different, it'll come here to the city council as well at some point in the future so that it can be uh, enacted by December or by January of next year. Because it's a complete moratorium at the moment, right? The, well, right, moratorium's at the end of the year. Right. Okay. Petco, Michael. Um, we've been having a lot of scheduled and non-scheduled meetings on the industrial park, uh, mostly with NDOT right now, discussing different ways that uh, we can get into some of the properties, some of it's landlocked. Um, so we're talking about various options there. Uh, a couple days ago we had a meeting with the housing authority. Uh, it was a business owners only meeting, special invites uh, that the, the housing company wanted to talk with. Um, we're moving forward on that. The role of this meeting was to discuss um, FEDCO's specific project uh, as far as the housing units are concerned. We were asking business leaders what kind of homes would be attractive to employees and uh, professional people for them. Gathered a lot of information, we're still culling through it to figure out what's what. Um, so that's really kind of right now everything that we can talk about at the moment. The man on August 12th, and I think they got another meeting coming up here shortly. I think tomorrow, August tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, but Dwayne did a great job uh, summarizing that. The only, I think they can, the park, Jessica Schaefer, they've got a website, and I think they got Facebook, and I think you can find that survey on there. That's the only thing I got to add. Uh, be there any council for aging, Mark? Kindly. Council on Aging actually met yesterday, but I was unable to attend to. Uh, Another meeting, uh, BCA meets tomorrow night. They've got uh, three petitions uh, on their agenda. Um, two of them are having to do with uh, fence berry, uh, in the front yard, a variance for fences in the front yard. Uh, one due to a dog and the other one privacy fence. So. Um, pretty normal agenda for them tomorrow night, but that's tomorrow night. Okay. Um, Ruth, got any ones all the waste? Um, it was last month after our meeting that I went, so, um, after. But, uh, <laughs> they, yeah, it has been a while. They, uh, pretty much every month they get almost the same amount of money. I think the interesting thing that I keep finding out as I'm learning more about them is how much stuff they actually take that they don't get paid for. Mm. You know, like your five gallon plastic pickle buckets. <laughs> if I need it for concrete, gee, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's, I, you know, I go through 18 of those a month and uh, they make no money off of that type of plastic. Mm. And, and there's all tons that they just give away just so that it doesn't go into our <laughs> into our dump, which is really nice. And that's just one example of stuff they take. You got a use for it, though. Yeah, if you have a use for it, you can, yeah, you can also go and get it yourself. You know, I like those buckets. I like your cat litter buckets or anything like that. Oh, none of that's recycled. None of that's recycled. Oh, yes. 
but they still take it. So, so they count the hundreds of pounds that they actually give away or pay to get away. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Okay, tree board, never met. Nothing going on there yet. No meeting to report. The water board job's not here. County, do you guys want to share anything from the county? I can always talk, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, we did appoint, we had a 911 director and an EMA director position open. We did fill them. Uh, Brittany Thompson is our 911 director, and Don Sewell is our EMA director. So, having a director, hopefully, we can get you taken care of to make it easier on you. So, uh, she ain't officially supposed to start till September 9th, but I'm right. sure if you want to talk to her, you know, more. Yeah. yeah. Not to bother Okay. Okay. So that's it for me. Unless you guys got any questions, I'll make it short and sweet. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have shared this with Andy already, and uh, we will be on the radio, I believe, Friday. Um, the Beeman Home, I have briefly had mentioned this a while back. Uh, I sit on the Beeman Home board as the Polk County representative, and um, due to some domestic violence situations, um, the Beaven Home Board has approved an individual to start being housed here um, once every other week. So it's not a perfect solution yet. We're working on the more long-term solutions with the county. Rick has been helping me with that, as well as Dave Summers. But um, they were here on the 21st, the uh, young ladies that will be sharing the responsibility. One of them lives in Argus, and so they will be here. I believe it's going to be Wednesdays, but I will get that final report tomorrow. So Andy um, has been notified, and then the prosecutor's office as well. So they will be here if there are any issues related to um, somebody who is having a current situation that needs help. There, um, they will be here for them to meet with, to discuss, if it's an emergency situation, they will uh, work with law enforcement to get them placed, um, unfortunately, all the way in Warsaw until we can figure something else out. But they will transport, they will figure out transportation. Um, so they have offered that to us as an immediate solution while we're working on long term solutions. So I just wanted to say that out loud to everybody that that person will not be here, of course, this Wednesday, but then next Wednesday. But we will be discussed on the radio, the uh, interim director and I, and she will be sharing what exactly the plan is so that anybody here can be aware of that and that resource will be available to us. It does not cost us anything um, at the moment. So. All right. Andy, legal department, do you have anything you want to add or share? I do not have anything else. ADA concerns, Beth, anything there? Um, motion to adjourn. Motion's been made. All in favor say aye. Aye.